Okay, and we're here with college board uh, candidate and running for re-election, Nancy Greenstein. Nancy, thanks so much for joining us. And why don't you tell us about yourself and why you're running for re-election this year? Okay, well, I'll, I'll just give a little background. I think most people here know me, but you know, I don't ex expect everybody in Santa Monica to know me. So, um, so I, I worked, I worked, I'm an educator, I'm a social worker. My degrees are in bachelor's elementary education, master's in social work, doctorate in education. And um, I've always worked in the public sector got with government or nonprofits. I've never worked for a private institution. And um, I'm retired now from what I call my day jobs and just as busy as ever really working on things that are I feel passionate about, which has is, is really been nice. And um, thinking about like some of my experience, um, I can think of three three positions that really helped make me the person I am, and I also con contributed to. And one was when I first got out of social work school, I was um, the social worker for a place called Tribal American Children's Center. It was in south southeast LA, and basically they had early childhood programs, tutoring after school programs, parent education programs for Native Americans. And that area, particularly Maywood Bell Gardens um, Commerce has a, the largest Native American urban population. And um, I think, I don't know if it's in the country, but it's it's definitely west of the Rockies. And and so I worked there and um, I was brand new and I just, I just loved the community. I had taught school on the Navajo, Navajo reservation. Um, I knew some of their relatives and um, it was a great job. And it also reminds you of the, the need there is and how much there's you can do if you truly want to, to help, to help other people and to also be of value. So that was a great, ex that was a great experience and, and very interesting. And then the other one was, um, City of West Hollywood when, when it was not even two years old. And at that time, it was the creative city. And people, I had jobs where people didn't tell me what to do. So I did what I wanted, which was just was so good because um, you know, you figure you do what you wanted, and if people hate them, they'll tell you. And I was fortunate that pretty much everything I was doing went fit in with the city's mission and was successful. So I did a lot of work on um, hate crimes, um, things like seniors commission started. I staffed the first um, public safety commission. Um, I was staffed to the, at that time we called it the Gay and Lesbian Sheriff's Conference Committee. That ended up morphing into being the city's public safety administrator. And I worked with, um, I worked with the sheriffs and the community. And at that time, um, the city had been unincorporated. The sheriffs were considered an occupying army. They certainly were. And I asked the city manager, what do you want? And he said, I want, I want community policing. And um, I said, okay, made a little timeline. It was gonna take a few years. And um, when, by the time I left that position, we, we had community policing. Um, we had a lot of projects. The, the deputies were happy working with the community. It was much more fun. And um, we had won a number of awards, uh, including the uh, International Chiefs of Police, like major award for a program where we did outreach to the homeless. And, um, and we with the social workers who work for um, nonprofit agencies. And, um, and that, this was in the 90s. So, you know, be sort of ahead of the curve. And then my last job, which was before I retired was UCLA. And, I worked still in public safety, but I was brought over because of the way I was able to work with this community of West Hollywood and the and the sheriffs and to do this for UCLA. And there I got really involved in um, working with um, sur survivors of um, sexual assault, hate crimes, working with student affairs. And the same thing, I didn't, I didn't have much supervision. I worked for the chief of police sort of and um, did what I wanted. And so I was actually able to, um, like I was updating the hate crime policy and I called ACLU and I talked to the attorney there and I said, I'm gonna send you my policy that I'm working on. 
and tell me tell me what you think. And she told me, and I incorporated it. I give it to the chief. He signed it, and that was our policy. And then um, Patricia, yes, keep going. She's talking to Jean or something. Oh. So um, so that became their policy. And then people would call me and say, "Do you have a good policy?" And I would say yes. And I ended up sending it all over the country. But yet, this unbeknownst to everybody, this policy included um, input from ACLU. So I, I did that a lot with my positions because I, I was fortunate to have a fairly good track record and um, not, you know, and could do it. And if, as long as it was successful, nobody really cared that much. Just had to make them look good. Cool, thanks. Okay, so um, let me start. I uh, wanted to ask you if you could share some more about the Equity Center and the Equity Pathways and Inclusion programs that you mentioned in your questionnaire. That seems okay. like that's a big, uh, you know, point of pride for you in your in your work at the college. And I'd love to hear more about it. Okay, and I'm happy to talk about it. It's it's not even two years old. It was an initiative that began a, a number of years ago by and started with a woman who was faculty member and wanted a women's center. And then um, as you know, times change, it became, okay, let's have a gender center. And then students said, well, we would like to have a center for you know, um, African-Americans and for Latinos and, and, you know, and ev everybody wanted a center. So the students then, were, it was suggested and they began working with each other. So I have to say the reason I'm so proud of this initiative, it was even though there was faculty involved, it was really the students who did the work to make it happen. And, um, and then we, on the college board, we provided some funds and different staff were assigned. And it's become this wonderful center that the students have total ownership over and um, provides resources for every provides resources for students, but it also provides resources for faculty and staff. And I know I think one of your questions talked about what are you doing for the families? And there's resources there for everybody. And it and it's just it just started, so it's going to grow. And so um, I'm I'm very excited about that, particularly because of the student input. Great, thank you, uh, Patricia. Yes, I, I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention and, and was waving while I was, while you were talking. Um, oh, no, I thought you were giving me a message. No, no, I was, I was asking Gene to make me a cup of coffee, so, <laughs> and he did. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, so, um, no, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, you've been my go-to person for 20 years on issues that involve public safety and police and things like that, and I, and I was sorry that you, that I don't think you applied, but you certainly didn't get on the public safety oversight committee and um and it, you know it's an area i you know i remember when when all of a sudden a water main boat burst on sunset boulevard and you had to reroute traffic and thing uh, you know and yeah. all of those things but also that you that you joined with your campus police force when um when there was an active shooter on your campus and um and you know now now with your background in early childhood and your you know foreground in police activities or whatever uh you know what are, how should we be handling it what should we be doing not just at the college but the college certainly um you know people are talking about pardon the expression, hardening campuses, you know, should mm -hmm. there be a, a more perimeter uh, monitoring of the college? What, what, what is being done in those areas? Well, we're, we're fortunate at the college because we have an excellent chief of police right now who's a true believer in community policing, who worked with me at UCLA. And um, he, he was one of, he was one of the ones who was a believer and actually was a little bit alienated from some of the other um, command staff because they, you know, they were more hard line. And so he, he 
he got recognized by um, different clubs and he just got a uh, manager of the year and he the students have given him a manager of whatever award and so if you can find somebody like that to work with your community that's great because then you can do all the things where it's it's a team so it's not just about policing it's about the counselors and it's about everything else and the plans include all these people but the reality is when you have an active shooter you want police you want an armed response and at the college one of our officers he was just getting off duty he was a surgeon at the time botton field and he heard the call and he didn't even put on his vest he ran to the library and was the first person on the scene and we took down the shooter before that person could continue going through the library they had they had unfortunately killed people on the street but mm -hmm. they that's when they right. got to the library, they got stopped. And another reason they got stopped was that people had been trained. So people talked about going to the safe room. And so a lot of people listening to the staff said, what, you have a safe room? Like, as, like you know, the one where you put your money in? And I'm like, no, it's the safe room where, you know, you can, you can get, you can hide mm -hmm. and you can communicate. And um, really, it was a file room. And um, so people were trained and they hadn't had training that much before this happened. So that helped. So what you wanna do is you want, you want leaders who believe that it's shared, like a trained community, a knowledgeable community, and also a really good police team who, which they didn't do in Texas, which is um, basically what most police agencies do now, is you go to the crime you don't wait for you know your your problem solving unit you don't wait for people you go to the crime highest rank, rank person becomes a commander as they're replaced the next person becomes the commander and you just continue on and um that that happened for us unfortunately it didn't happen in texas and you can see the difference but in terms of here i just want to say i applied to be on the commission the committee that was talking about how what is our um, police commission going to look like and um and i didn't get chosen for that so i figured um i'll just i i, I talked to people there i volunteered to help if they needed me but you know sometimes they have their own ideas well thank you it's a you know it's a it's a go-to person that i had hoped i would never have to ever call for any reason and um and it's good to have knowledgeable people who are yeah. out community yeah it was and it, it was hard i mean because you know friends had family members lost family members and you know yeah. but but i'm i'm proud that everybody did their job and i remember and, that incident that guy went right by our house so yeah. very scary that's true mm. okay let's go to melissa sure Hey, Nancy, good to see you. Um, I have a question about housing, um, which, you know, obviously you stated in your questionnaire, you're, you're a proponent of. Um, can you just talk a little bit about specifically what you'll do if reelected to make the reality of housing and particularly housing for unhoused students a reality? I know there's lots going on. There's, you know, some shift to it maybe really happening but can you talk in a little bit more detail about how you'll keep absolutely, moving that forward absolutely because for a long time you know we, we talked about housing but it just didn't seem practical and now it does so i'm i'm actually very excited because now um i know the the possibility is real as opposed to just you know an idea and nobody's there won't be any follow through so we have a planning grant from the state and so people are working on planning and funding and all those things. Um, there seems to be agreement that Bundy campus would be, a, which is airport campus, which would be a good place because it's quite a large parcel. So we could um, build, we can build housing, you know, and have green space and do everything right. And um, so we're looking at it from a lot of different perspectives. And that's, that's part of the planning process. We really want to make it so it's affordable housing, particularly for students. And um, and then we have to look at the funding models. We've been talking to, you know, Community Core and other nonprofits about it. And and this I knew because I, I also work I'm working with um 
another some other programs with some other housing agencies like Venice um, Venice Community Housing and and so I know that to fund student housing a lot of the funds don't allow you to do that and so you have to find but you can you could fund if you were saying we're having student housing and we're having um, family housing and we're we're going to move student family housing you know and there would be a way to perhaps work with that or just to have um, affordable housing and not necessarily have it have to be students just have community members and we're um so we're looking at we're looking at all the options if you have one and I know Patricia you know a lot about housing so you know we're talking to Tara I think that I was told we're talking to Tara and so hopefully we are and um and so we want it we want to do that we really want to make it something affordable for our students we want to make it good for the community and we um and you know and I, I think like th there's models where you have senior housing and student housing and and they you know seniors they sort of coexist in a very positive way and there so I'm, I'm not saying that should be but there's just so many things out there I want us to look at them and then figure out what can help us with funding so we have a bond on the ballot and part of that bond and I think the reason that many of us on the board supported it was that it will go to housing and and I've heard different stories from people, but I, I've confirmed that basically we're looking at, um, we'll, we'll be looking at state funding, federal funding, all kinds of funding. And um, and also we'll, we'll be using that bond for, to pay for our share for matching funds and what, whatever we, how much, how far it can go for us. But it's it's gonna have to be a project that's creative. And, and I think there's truly the will. So I'm I'm sort of excited about it now. Good, great, thank you, Isabel. Yeah, hi Nancy. Um, so I'm very interested in uh, the students transitioning to careers after college, especially. I think it's really important in community college where people, uh, many, many people, are trying to climb the economic ladder, maybe out of, um, you know. Uh, Circumstances that are difficult, and uh, are you able to hear me? No, just a little. It just got a little garbled. Oh, okay. Um, so advancing uh, uh, to careers after college, I see you're interested in that, and I think that's very uh, important, especially for people who are trying to climb the economic ladder out of maybe difficult circumstances. So I was interested. Um, in this program that you have the career pipeline advisory group and just to clarify is that only for homeless students is it, is, it is i still think it's good but then how does that fit into the overall is that the homeless service one or i i think it says yeah homeless because yeah, I, I wrote about the homeless service sector career pipeline it's a long name um which i'm excited about because it was because i was i was involved from the beginning and what this one would do would um, really address the need that uh, people who work in the service sector brought to us with um, a friend of mine who works for the county. And that would be to, to provide training and education for people who, who might be students and this they want to have a career and they feel that this, this would be a way they give back and they might choose this. They may be wanting to go on to be a social worker, counselor or for people with lived experience who are, you know, basically um, looking for a new start and we we would have a certificates. So let's start with a basic one, what, what it's like to work in this community and these agencies. And then we might have something on, you know, procedures, history of homelessness. So we'd have like maybe three classes would lead to a certificate. A baseline certificate and then the agencies would know that every, these people have training and they would feel like okay I, we don't have to start from scratch and then we're ta we're talking about then having a ladder so then ultimately you might train as a supervisor and then you may want to go for your aa degree but what we've heard from the agencies is you know this would help them justify you know raise giving people raises which is important to them. 
So, so I think I understood it differently, but I think what oh. you're talking about is good too. I thought this was for homeless students to help them advance into a career. No, but you're saying it's for homeless students and yeah. then they can live in our housing. But um, but, if, <laughs> but if, you're if, saying it's for any that. students to go into that field, into that career field. Or, or people who have lived experience, like they've been homeless or are homeless, who want to continue their education. And in order to make that happen, we know we, we'd have to, um, you know, have heavy representation of counselors and folks who can assist them, which is what we want to do. And we're working with LASA now and um, some cities are involved. And so a college it took them a little while to, you know, sort of say, OK, we're, you know, we're going to do this. But um, they're, they're at the point now where the curriculum is being developed. And what we were able to do is hire two women who were part of the initial group with me um, who run agencies to work on curriculum. So the curriculum will be done in conjunction with, you know, um, faculty at the college and people who have the, the street experience and know what folks are going to encounter. And so we're hoping that maybe like, in the, you know, next year, we'll, we'll start offering the certificate. And so... I'm excited by that. And then, as I said, then we live in our housing and, you know, I, I, I just get excited and, you know, start expanding the horizons too quickly sometimes. Well, no, I think it's great. I think it's really important to help people transition to careers. So this is just one more uh, aspect of that. So uh, I think it's great. But we do a lot of, have a lot of people returning to school and when we, and we do have programs for, we pretty much have programs for everybody. All right. Okay, thanks so much, Nancy. Appreciate you stopping by. Good to no, hear. No, it's really nice. Actually, it was very nice to see you all. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> good thank to meet you. you. All right, take care. We'll see you on D&I. <laughs> mm -hmm.